Variables and data types are crucial concepts in any programming language, including AutoID. By understanding how to use variables and different data types, you can write more efficient and effective scripts. In this tutorial, we will dive deeper into the world of variables and data types in AutoIt, exploring various examples and use cases. Firstly, let's take a closer look at variables. As mentioned earlier, variables are containers that hold values in AutoIt. You can declare a variable using the local keyword followed by the name of the variable. It's good practice to use meaningful and descriptive names for your variables. This makes it easier to understand what the variable represents and its purpose in your script. In addition to the local keyword, you can also use other keywords such as global or static, depending on your specific use case. Global variables can be accessed from anywhere in your script, while static variables retain their value between function calls. Now I will briefly go through each data type in Autoit and provide a few examples to help you understand their usage. Without further delays, let's discuss the different data types in Autoit. The integer data type represents whole numbers such as 42 or minus 10. You can perform mathematical operations on integers, such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In this example, we declare three integer variables, $num students, $num classrooms, and $averages students per classroom. We then assign the value 30 to $num students and the value 3 to $num classrooms. Finally, we calculate the value of $averages students per classroom by dividing $num students by $num classrooms. We then use the console write function to print the result to the console. Strings, on the other hand, represent a series of characters. They are enclosed in double quotes such as hello world or auto is awesome. You could concatenate strings using the ampersand and operator or the plus plus operator. In this example, we declare three string variables, dollar student name, dollar class name, and dollar greeting. We then assign the values John Doe and programming 101 to dollar student name and dollar class name respectively. We then concatenate the values of dollar student name and dollar class name with a hello and welcome to text respectively to create the greeting. We then use the console write function to print the greeting to the console. Booleans represent a value that can be either true or false. They are commonly used in conditional statements and loops to control the flow of your script. You can use comparison operators such as equal to equals equals and non equal to equals to compare Boolean values. In this example, we declare three Boolean variables dollar is student enrolled, dollar has student paid, and dollar student cannot in class. We then assign the values true and false to dollar is student enrolled and dollar has student paid, respectively. Finally, we calculate the value of dollar student cannot in class by using the an operator to check whether both dollar is student enrolled and dollar has student paid are true. We then use the console write function to print the result to the console. Floats are decimal numbers such as 3.14159 or minus 2.5. They are useful for mathematical operations that require greater precision than integers. In this example, we declare three float variables, $pi, $radius, and $circle area. We then assign the value 3.14159 to $p and the value 5 to $radius. Finally, we calculate the value of $circle area using the formula for the area of a circle. Where is the value of $radius? We then use the console write function to print the result to the console. In addition to the basic data types, AutoIt also supports advanced data types such as arrays, maps, and structs. Arrays are used to store a collection of values of the same data type. Maps, also known as dictionaries or hash tables, are used to store key value pairs. Structs, on the other hand, are used to store related data of different data types. Let us look into this data types. Functions are pieces of code that can be used more than once to do a specific job. You can define a function in AutoIt by using the func keyword, followed by the function name and then the function body, which is surrounded by curly braces. For instance, you can create a function called addNumbers that takes two integers as input and returns the sum of those numbers. Then you can call this function from other parts of your script by passing the arguments and assigning the return value to a variable. Arrays are groups of variables with the same data type that are set up in a certain way. 
You can define an array and auto it by using the dim keyword, followed by the name of the array and the number of elements. For example, the statement dim dollar my array 5 can be used to set up an array called dollar my array that can hold five integer values. Then you can give values to the elements of the array using index notation. For example, dollar my array 0 equals 1 gives the value 1 to the first element. The binary data type is used to represent a string of zeros and ones like machine code or other binary data. With the binary function, you can set up a binary variable and auto it. For example, you can make a binary variable called binary data and give it the value of 0x45 and 90 quintillion. This is a hexadecimal representation of a Windows executable file. Pointers are variables that hold the address of where another variable is stored in memory. Auto, it doesn't support pointers directly, but you can use the dull call function to call external DL functions that need pointers as arguments. For example, you can make a function pointer variable called dollar my function pointer and assign a function pointer to it using the dull call function. To show that the argument is a pointer, you would need to define the function prototype and use the pure keyword. Structs are used to define a structure that is compatible with the parameters of a DL function. With auto, it's dull struct create function. You can set up a struct. For example, you can define a struct for the point structure used by Windows API functions by calling the dull struct create function and passing the structure definition as a string. Then you can use the dull struct set data and dull struct get data functions to set and get the values of the struct's members respectively. In a programming language, keywords are special words that can't be used as names for variables or functions. Some of the words used in auto it are if, else, for, while, switch, and case. You can use these keywords to control how your script works and do operations that depend on certain conditions or happen over and over again. Autoit provides a number of built-in objects that can be used to interact with external applications and automate various tasks. One such object is the Excel object, which can be used to automate Microsoft Excel. The Excel object provides access to various properties and methods that can be used to manipulate Excel workbooks, sheets, cells, and other elements. First, the script creates an Excel object using the obj-create function. This creates a new instance of the Excel application, which can then be controlled programmatically. Next, the script sets the visible property of the Excel object to true, which causes the Excel window to be displayed on the screen. Then the script creates a new workbook using the add method of the workbook's collection of the Excel object. This creates a new empty workbook that can be used to store data. The script then gets a reference to the active sheet in the workbook using the active sheet property of the workbook object. This allows the script to manipulate the contents of the sheet programmatically. The script then adds some data to the sheet by setting the value property of various cells. The cells property is used to access individual cells in the sheet using row and column indices. Finally, the script saves the workbook to disk using the save as method of the workbook object. The file is saved to the path specified in the argument to the save as method. Finally, the script closes the workbook and the Excel application using the close and quit functions. In conclusion, understanding variables and data types is a fundamental aspect of programming, and this tutorial has provided a brief overview of how to use them in AutoIt. By understanding the different types of data that can be stored in a variable and how to declare and manipulate them, you will be well on your way to creating powerful scripts and automating complex tasks in AutoIt. Keep practicing and experimenting with different data types and variables, and soon you will be creating complex and useful programs that can save you time and effort. Happy scripting!